hey, welcome to Rise Church, where we have made it our passionate pursuit to help people take steps in their relationship with Jesus while remaining dedicated to sound biblical theology coupled with the authentic power of God. As you came in, you should have received a bulletin. Go ahead and check that out for a little bit more info on who we are and what we believe. You'll also find a list in there of the different events coming up and the different groups we have going on. So check out your bulletin. We want you to be a part of our church family, and this is going to help you do that. This morning, we're going to have a number of different ways that you can worship with us, and we want to just walk you through some of those steps as this may be new to you. In just a few moments, we'll have some music, which is going to help us reflect on who Jesus is and what he's like and what he's done in our lives. So feel free to sing along with us. We should have the words on screen. Some of us will choose to worship via dancing, whether that looks like clapping our hands or uh, moving about or stomping our feet or jumping up and down. You're welcome to do that here. We see that in the scriptures, by the way, as David would dance before the Lord and a number of other examples. Some people will worship via some art form. Maybe you're inspired to draw a picture or paint a picture. You're welcome to do that during this time, too. Some of us will just need to take a step back and contemplate and think about some of the ideas that the Lord is placing into our hearts. You're welcome to do that now. We also believe that we worship with our finances. We believe that God's given us everything that we have, and it's a blessing from Him, and we choose to worship Him with that, with our tithes and our offerings, our above and beyond offerings. And so if you choose to do that today, you can send a text message to the number 84321, and that'll give you some prompts. You can also go directly to our website at risechurchid.org. If you're here with us in-house, we will have some baskets at the front of the room, right at the front, and at the back of the room. And if you miss those, we also have the mailbox out front that you can place those offerings in. We'll also get to a time here in just a few of reading through the scriptures, whether that be in a prophetic sense where someone is just sharing scriptures or a more exegetical teaching of the scriptures. And so do pay attention for that. We've got some little sheets throughout the building for some notes. Feel free to jot down notes, and we'll also have a time of prayer. We, we just really believe that we serve an almighty God, and he does listen to our prayers, and he is able to answer our prayers, and he loves to do so. And so if at some point today you feel like you want to receive prayer, it would be such a privilege for us to be able to pray with you. So if you're online, go ahead and put it in the chat, send us an email, um, or send us a message on one of the formats that you are watching on. If you're here in-house, we've got prayer teams that are available for you. Also recognize that our heart is this, that you don't leave here without being transformed, and a lot of times our transformation requires us to take action. And so we've got little bulletins, little sheets throughout the building here that will help you to take some next steps. So look for that little sheet of paper, that little flyer that says next steps. Also, if you haven't committed to being a part of our church family, if you haven't declared and said, this is my church home, you can do so. We've got little sheets throughout our facility that say, make Rise Church my home. As we're a part of our church family, a few things that we do is we commit, we contribute, and we communicate. And you can start to do that via those flyers. I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and worship Jesus. Hey, good morning. That was so weak sauce, y'all. Good morning. Come on, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I got to uh, go away this past week for a conference uh, it was a prophetic conference in Las Vegas, and I had, uh, I, I had the Lord speak to me in a number of different ways. Here's one of the ways that he instructed me to, uh, to grow this year. Any, anybody still growing? There's this little verse uh, in, in Jesus' life and in John the Baptist's life, and it, it says, And Jesus grew, and he 
grew. And then there's these other scriptures that say we are being conformed into the image of Jesus. So we're not there yet. I'm growing. And here's one of the things the Lord uh, was helping me to grow in. He, he was showing me how the Lord goes before us. The Lord goes before us. And so right here, right now, all I need to do is to simply step into what God has done before us. We get to step into that. If we want to experience the, the glory of God, though, we've got to be people of the presence of God. And so practically what that means is I've got to slow down, I've got to shut off everything else, and I've got to listen to what God is is doing. And so I just want to, I want to start here. Before I even get into announcements or anything else, I just want to step into an awareness that God is here. Anybody agree with that? Like, do you, do you have that within your theology? Do you have that within your experience that God is here? He's here right now, and he loves us so much, and he loves to help us to know that he is here. Those are called manifestations of his presence. And so let's, let's step into that for a moment. God, we, we point our eyes towards you. God, we want you. We want to see Jesus elevated because he is the king of kings. Lord, you are the king of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the sovereign God of creation. Oh, would you stir it up in here, Lord? Would you stir it up in our hearts? I just have a little song on my heart I want, I want to sing. I'm not, I'm not a singer, uh, but I can, I can worship a little bit. If you, if you know the words, you're welcome to, to sing with me. So stir it up in our hearts, Lord, stir it up in our hearts, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shine and lend the light of your glory. And pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. I want to see you. Come on, that's our heart this morning. We want to see you lifted up. We want to see you lifted up, Jesus. I just pray for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit with each person in this room. Your word says to be continually filled by your spirit. It, it gives us this heart that we need to fill up so that we can spill up as, as we're each a vessel of the Holy Spirit. We need to fill up all the way so that we can spill up on those, those around us. So fill us up, Lord. Someone say, fill us up. Fill Got a few things going on um, around here that I want us to, I want us to know about. Um, you, you see in your bulletins that we have a number of events going on throughout the week. Those are meant for community. Those are meant so that we aren't uh, the, that lone ranger. I'm sure there's a song out there or something like that. We're not those lone rangers, right? We are the body of Christ. That means we function together. We're meant, we're built for community that we do this together. Someone say, I got to do this together. together. Okay, so that's the way that we do that. We've got these groups so that we can do this, so that we can do this together. Also have an opportunity um, for all the ladies, like, I, you need like a hey or something like that. Okay, ladies. This is not one of our ministries, but this is something that is put on um, by someone who is a part of our church. This is this one right here, Alicia and her friend Jamie Melendez. They have a women's retreat, um, and what's, what's the deal with the women's retreat? You, you have a heart, and you told me that heart, and I, I, I want people to get that heart. So. So the Lord put it on our hearts to see women um, find freedom and healing in the presence of Jesus. And so this women's retreat is really an intimate place where we go deep in worship. And our whole, um, just I guess, I don't want to say agenda, but our whole agenda is to meet face to face with God. And we, we find that every year we leave changed and and. Honestly, that's, that's what it is. Every year we leave 
we go in and, and we're raw and vulnerable before the Lord and we come out just changed and knowing him even deeper than we, we thought we knew him. And, and honestly, we have, we've seen, and, and if anybody's ever been there, which there's a few people that have been there, um, we find the freedom and healing that can only come from Jesus. So that's, that's honestly what it's about in a nutshell. Yeah. And so here at our, our church, we have established uh, leadership to ensure that each, each uh, group within our church gets ministered to. And so Johnny leads our women ministry. Johnny, would you give a wave? Say, hey. Hey, Johnny. Good to see you. And so this ministry is for interdenominational ministry for for women so we're probably going to have some baptists there we're probably going to have some pentecostals there we'll probably have some bapticostals there yeah. like is <laughs> right so it's interdenominational right and so um so if if you have any more questions about that women's retreat um please go ahead and check out this flyer or talk to miss lisha we've also got a mom's group starting when's that starting mama this week <laughs> thursday 10 A.M., yeah? You ain't going to be partying all night? Okay, all right. 10 a.m., that's going to be at our place. If you have questions about that, you can talk to my wife, my lovely wife, my beautiful wife. I adore you. I adore you. Um, And you can ask her about that. Also want to communicate a little bit more vision. So as we are talking about what God's doing here, here's here's what we believe, our, our vision in a nutshell, that God is building something here where we can function in the supernatural while being dedicated to sound biblical theology. It's, it's going to be a prophetic hub. We're going to continue to, to see ministries pop up. We're going to have our hand in a number of different things. And as, as we're doing this, we're seeking to be built up in a truly biblical way. And so we're evaluating like every single thing that we do. And one of the see- things that we see in Ephesians as Paul is writing is that we want to be a church that is equipping the saints. Our leaders are equipping the saints for the work of ministry in, with five specific giftings. What are those giftings? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors. Teachers, what happens in the church when it's all centered around one person? Someone said that's called idolatry. If you, if you are seeing only one person ministering at a church, then it's all about that one person and it becomes idolatry. Because now I'm here at that church because of that person and not because of the person. Okay, and so what we're doing here is we're building an environment that is biblical and it's not, a, it's not all about me. And as we're stepping into each season, we're just saying, all right, God, what's the season need to look like? Because I don't got it all figured out. I don't know how that feels as the leader sharing with with everybody else that I don't know how everything plays out. I just simply say, all right, God, show me what to do. And that's that's what we do. And I'm recognizing in this season that I can't be that, that pastor who is meeting everybody all over the place and, and then coming up here and, and doing ministry from, from here and then, and then meeting with every single little person and then getting every, every person getting connected, it's, it's too much. It's too much. I don't think that's the way that God intended this to be. And so what I believe is that there's apostles and there, there's teachers and, and then that some are gifted as, as pastors, as shepherds, as those people who are supposed to connect with other people and get them connected within the church and help them find their way in the body. And so I want to introduce those people to you today. Cindy and Steve Schaff, if you guys, Steve's in his cage, uh, some call it the kennel, um, <laughs> saying, get out of your cage! Woo, there he is. Come on over here, you two. And so these faces you're going to see at the beginning of service and at the end of services, and they're, they're going to be inviting you. They're going to be sharing what our vision, mission and vision is at the beginning of church. They're going to be one of the things I, I realized at uh, the conference that I was at is that sometimes people like me can say stuff and it doesn't fully land. What the shepherd does is they say, this is how this is actually applicable in your life, right? So maybe I speak on a different level, and they realize that, oh, this, this is actually the level where people are at. That's where these guys come in. 
And so as they just step into this ministry, we just want to lay hands on them. And uh, if you wouldn't mind just extending a hand toward them. Father, we thank you for this couple. We thank you for this family and all that's represented, all of them that are represented (laughs) through this family. Uh, And Lord, we just pray that right now is a, a shifting season. That this is different than, than it was. And we just pray for increase now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for your fresh filling of your Holy Spirit. I pray, God, as they would step into this new season, that there would be fresh grace on their lives. Lord, this, this, we believe that you empower the fivefold ministry. It's not something that we've done. And so I'm simply just acknowledging what you've placed in them. And so, God, we thank you for these shepherds. God, we thank you for these pastors. We pray, God, that you would lead them, that you would go before them, that you would prepare the way for them. I pray, God, that you would open their ears, that they would hear your voice all the more clearly, that they would know what to do, what to say, when to do it, how to connect people, that there would be divine connections made. Thank you, Jesus. Team, you got anything else to add in in prayer over them? Yes. I do. Okay. Oh. May I? Go ahead. Ladies first. This is being recorded and stuff. I can't, you know, go through. Uh, <laughs> Lord, I, I just, I felt like um, the Lord is just um, saying that he's well pleased with us. Mm-hmm. And the enemy is very sneaky. He's tried to come in and, and steal the mantles. Even, I just, I feel like even right now there's been an attack and an assault on the calling of God, mm-hmm. of, of your life. And I felt like the Lord said, no, step into it. Keep going. Keep rising up. Keep walking in who I created you to be because that's who you really are. So don't let the enemy rob you. And just, I feel like just this keep going. Keep going. And we all have a capacity to some degree for empathy and uh, not sympathy, but empathy, like to be able to see things from other people's perspective. And for pastors, it's just so important to be able to walk in that. And you guys have a probably, <laughs> I would definitely say, a bigger than average amount of empathy. But what happens is when we release our wiring to Jesus, like how we're wired, our personality, our talents, whatever, and we release that to him and it has his anointing, then it's like, you know, so... It's like vinegar and baking soda, kind of a, you know, there's a reaction there that's that's really going to be special. And I just want to pray God's, I pray God's anointing mm-hmm. over the way he's made you. People aren't just gifted as pastors. They can be like wired as pastors yeah. and gifted as pastors. And we pray that Jesus, uh, your pastoral gifting and including like your empathy working through them, the way you've already wired them with your anointing, Lord, that it would be released in a powerful way for people to uh, take steps in Jesus, as uh, Pastor Ben and our church have learned to say it. So uh, we bless them and, and release them in that in Jesus' name. Okay. I've got a mic here. Um, I feel like stop. No, no. Just keep going. Okay. Uh, you should. Okay. <laughs> down in Vegas, when we were down there, I got a word about gifts of freedom. I had people come up and different people from Sandy and some of them said, John, you know, like you're kind of one word, mine was freedom, and some people stand in tongues, but I got that for you too, freedom, right. it's like Galatians 5.1, yeah. where it says, stand fast, therefore in the liberty that Christ has set you free, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, so you have the choice of either being freed, free or in bondage, and God would say, stand fast, or therefore, in the liberty that God, Christ has set you free, and don't go back, in other words, don't go back to that yoke of bondage. So he's speaking freedom over you. Free. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're not quite done yet. I just feel like the Lord's prompted me to do one more thing. And I I think you guys will get the the sense of what this actually is. But I just feel like I'm supposed to dust you off. There's stuff we're supposed to brush off. We're just dusting it off. And so we just pray right now, and anything that has been spoken over them that's ill, anything that has clung to them, any weights or encumbrances, we just drop them off right now in the name of Jesus. There's no more baggage. There's no more parachute pulling behind you. You are free to run forward and run your race. You are free to run your race. And so, Father, I thank you for this. Catapult them into this next season in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.
Okay, all right, sweet. It's on, yeah. So I'll, I'll let you guys figure that out um, as we're doing this. We got one more thing uh, I, I want to do this morning. It's we got to recognize the gifts that we have. We've got to recognize the gifts that God has given us. I, I believe in this season, and one of the things that you've seen over the past several weeks is that God has called us towards joy. He's called us towards yes. joy, and how do we live in this place? How do we live in this place? We'll, we'll get here a little bit more. I'm, I'm getting into my message and all this stuff, but it's so good. It's so good. I'm so excited to be back. This is so good. In order to rejoice, we've got to recognize the joy that God has already brought in. It's to recommunicate the joy that God has placed in me. And so if I want to rejoice, I've got to recognize those things that God has done that has brought me joy, especially over this past year. And so we're going we're gonna to go there uh, in a little bit today, but we also rejoice over what God is, is doing right here in front of us. And today we get to rejoice over a new a baby that we have been blessed with. So Matthew and Brianna, if you could make your way up here. All right, it was, it was the glory. Just, ooh, ooh. This is Matthew and Brianna Pumphrey, and uh, where'd you guys just move from? Mississippi. And they are a part of our church family, and we get to, yeah, come on, give them a clap. And we get to dedicate their latest, and I won't say greatest, okay? You guys are both great. I love you both. We get to celebrate our, our latest Clark, Evan, Pumphrey, and um, we, a lot of churches, well, some churches do baby baptisms, right, where uh, they'll sprinkle water or, or whatever. We believe that baptisms are uh, for someone who makes a conscious choice, Someone who makes a choice to follow Jesus and therefore their outward reaction, their outward response is evidence of what has taken place inside. And so we hold baptisms for that. What we do do, don't laugh, what we do, sorry, that, hey, hey, what we do is we do baby dedications where like in Luke chapter 2 where Jesus was in the temple and dedicating him. A dedication for us here in our family is from the parents saying, we are going to come before the Lord and we're going to come before our church as accountability to say that we will raise our children in a godly way. We will seek after the Bible as our instruction to raising them up. And as a church, it's what we're doing is we're saying, there's a new part of the body of Christ there's a new part of the body of Christ, and we're going to do our part. You guys have a part in this family's life to hold them accountable, to be encouraging, to, to build them up. To, when you see these little children running through the halls, you be listening and say, all right, God, God can speak a word either to them or from them, right? And so this morning, we get to do this dedication. Um, if you would show them... Uh, we've got a little Jesus Storybook Bible and a certificate of dedication here for you. But before we get into all of this, I want to read my little script part so we are all on the same page as to what we are doing. So this first one is going to be to the parents, okay? Knowing that Clark is a gift from God and that he belongs to God, will you love your son? care for him, bring him up in the training and the instruction of the Lord? Will you do all you can to allow him to experience God's grace and forgiveness and to trust God with his life? Amen. That, that deserves a clap. Yeah. That deserves a clap. Now to the body of Christ. This is for your commitment. Do you acknowledge that Clark is a gift from God to all of us? Do you promise to love him, to help care for him, to live in a way that demonstrates the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus? If so, say, we do. We do. 
We do. Come on. We love you guys. We're so excited. <laughs> we're just going to take some time. We're going to pray over the parents, and we're going to pray over Clark. And uh, if you guys have any words of encouragement that would feel like they would come to, come to mind right now, feel free to do that. Um, we're going to borrow this. Is that one working? You want to start us off, babe? Oh, Lord, we just thank you this morning, God, that we get to dedicate this little one onto you this morning, Father. Lord, we stand in agreement with Clark's parents this morning, Lord, that, that this little one is yours, God. Lord, you knew him before he was conceived, Lord. You knew him before he was born, Father. Lord, he was yours from the very beginning, Jesus. So, Lord, we just, we just agree with that, God with what already is, Lord, that he is yours, Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would pour out your spirit upon him this morning, Jesus. Lord, that you would help him to grow in wisdom, Father, and in grace upon grace upon grace over his life, Lord. Jesus, that he would be a, a warrior after you, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, this morning as I was praying, I just felt felt the words prayer warrior over him, Jesus. So we just speak that over Clark this morning, God, that he would be a prayer warrior for your kingdom, Jesus. Lord, that I even see just even at a young age, Lord, that he would be, be noticeably set apart, Father. Lord, that the kids around him would even see something different within him, Lord. And the way that he prays even at an early age, Jesus. Lord, that there would just be something in his spirit, Jesus, that would just be after you full-heartedly. Lord, so we just, we speak health over him as he grows as well, Lord. There would be a supernatural protection over this little one. God, and that you, you would grace these two, that you would grace Brianna and Matthew, Lord, with your wisdom, Jesus. Lord, that they would have all wisdom, Lord, that they need to raise this little one up to be after you and to be on fire for you, God. Lord, that they would, that Clark would see the example that is in his parents, mm -hmm. Jesus. Lord, that you would equip them, God, that you would equip Brianna, Lord, that you would strengthen her, Lord. God, that, that you would give them words to speak life over Clark, Lord. I just see that strongly, life, Lord, that the words that come from their mouth would speak life, mm -hmm. God. Lord, that there would be living waters that would flow from them toward their children, God. And Lord, would your, your spirit just pour out afresh on them this morning as well, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for this man of God. Father, I just, I just thank you for this vision that you keep giving me of the generational deposits that which has been deposited from generation and being deposited into generation and being deposited into generations. Father, and I just pray an increase over each generation, an increase in gifting and an increase of ministry being poured out. Father, thank you for that. I pray, God, for prophetic visions for each of these, for Mama Bear and Papa Bear. Lord, as they would speak into their kids, that you would be showing them ways that they're specifically supposed to be raising and, and shaping each of them individually, and that they would be speaking those prophetic words over them, praying them out, Lord. We thank you for this, God. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, listen, if you guys have any other prophetic words that you want to share with them, be sure and grab them after service. But we welcome you into our family. We love you guys. And go ahead and present that to them. Amen. Welcome. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Would you guys stand with me this morning? I, I want to get into a little bit of worship via music. You guys ready for that? Yeah. Can we sing a little bit together this morning? Here, one of the things the Lord dropped on me this morning was Psalm 5114. Uh, if you're a note taker, make sure and write that down. Psalm 51, 14 says, Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue 
Someone say, my tongue. My tongue, my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. Oh, Lord, open my lips. Just touch your lips right now. Open my lips in the name of Jesus that my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifices or I would give it. You will not be pleased with burnt offerings. We give you our praise and our worship all this morning. It's all for you, Jesus. It's all for you, Jesus. Let's worship. Boy, do we have a great opportunity this morning to come into God's presence together. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know the Yah is Yahweh, yeah? Yah, Yahweh. And you know the hallelujah is praise. And uh, we're going to raise a hallelujah this morning.
Let's praise Him this morning. Oh, you're so good to us, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. No one. Woo, let our weapon, let our melodies be a weapon today, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is going to take us somewhere in this worship this morning. I hope you're buckled up. I hope you're dialed in. I hope you're tuned in. Let's give him our heart. Let's ask him to move. Let's ask his blessing this morning. That's where we're going.
of all my religion. Your way is better. Oh, your way is better. Thank you, Lord. Your way is so much better than any way I've ever tried. Every time I've tried to do it myself, I've failed and I fall short. Your way is better. Can we just go back to that bridge, Ned? And shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the wall of all my religion. Your way is better. hearts are sure yours today, Jesus. We just want you and more of you. Lord, we want you to move in us. We pray what you would do with us, like Pastor Ben said, Lord, fill us and cause us to spill. Fill us and spill us, Lord, all over. Lord, we know you're good. We know you have a heart for people. Lord, each person whose eyes we look in is someone you love, Lord, and we don't forget that today. And so we pray your blessing. We pray your redemption over us and our families and our community, Lord, we love the place where we live. We thank you for it. But Jesus, there's a sure a lot. There's too many lost people here, Lord. There's just too many lost people. And we know that in this day and this age, Lord, your typical run-of-the-mill Christianity church life is just not going to cut it to, to reach the lost people of this day, Lord. They need to see you move in power, and we want to be your vessel, Lord. We want to be your vessel. So we come to you. We worship you in this song, but we also intercede, Lord. And we say we trust you and we believe in you. And I would speak over every person in here. You are a vessel of God's Holy Spirit. And he will use you if you open your heart and your life. He will give you a word. He will, he will answer your prayer. He, will, he shares your concern and your love for the lost people in your family and, and the people you work with and the people you live next door to. So let's believe him to answer us. Let's believe him to be big today. I've seen what you can do 
God of wonders. The power has no end. Amen. The things you've done before in greater measure you will do again. We believe there's no prison wall you can break through. No mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise. No soul that you can't free. All things are possible. And the darkest night, you can light it up. Darkest night, the darkest. 
wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can't say, bodies you can't say, all things are possible. Things are possible. Good morning. I have the the privilege and joy in leading you in communion this morning. And I loved how Ben was talking about community earlier because community union are both in the word communion. Um, and we come together as a community to celebrate uh, what Christ has done for us. Um, and communion, uh, um, and to keep my, my nerves relaxed <laughs> as I'm up here, I have things written out. Um, I feel like it is from the Lord, but I'm just asking for grace as I learn, as I grow. So um, communion is union with Christ in his suffering. Uh, he told his disciples to take communion to remember before there was anything to remember yet. His sacrifice, resurrection, transfiguration, and ascension had yet to happen, yet he was asking them to do this in remembrance of me. He wasn't just speaking about what had already happened. He was talking about all that was to come to, union with Christ in his suffering and everything that was to follow. We celebrate union, we partake in communion as a family and as beneficiaries of the sacrifice of Christ together. So when I was thinking deeper about communion, I kept coming back to the elements, to the bread and to the wine, and why did Jesus chose, choose those things? Because we know with Jesus, everything in the Bible is very purposeful. You know, it's not like, hey, here's some bread. Oh, hey, there's some wine, it looks like blood, let's, you know, let's use that. But it was very purposeful. So why did he choose these two things? Um, and we, we also know the Bible's full of references to bread and to wine. And bread actually is mentioned 492 times in the Bible, which I was not aware of. And I believe that as we, if we dig deeper into where bread was used, um, that we will see uh, illustrations of who Jesus is and how he came for us. Um, and I also found it interesting that the only other time that we saw Jesus they spoke in the Bible about breaking bread was when Jesus was feeding the 5,000 and he broke the bread, um, which he gave it to the disciples and then they in turn gave it to the people, which is the perfect illustration of discipleship in that um, and community. Uh, we see Jesus turning water into wine at his first miracle and Jesus called himself the bread of life. Uh, in John, he said it several times, um, and in Corinthians and Matthew, John 6, 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. In John 6, 48, he said, I am the bread of life. In John 6, 51, he said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John 6, 49 through 50, he said, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. He was speaking of himself so that one may eat of it and not die. And Jesus also, he gave his disciples the bread in Matthew 26, 26. After blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Spiritual bread is the answer to spiritual famine. And what about the blood? Like, why, why would we need to dif differentiate? I was wondering, like, there's, what's, why the body and the blood? Like, they're, aren't they contained together? Um, but he wanted to differentiate between his blood and between his body um, at the Last Supper. So I started looking up, like, what he said about his blood and what's said about the blood through the Bible. So his blood um, redeems us, First Peter. 1, 18 through 19, his blood is for the remission of sins, Hebrews 9, 22. His blood cleanses us, 1 John 1, 7. His blood gives us eternal redemption, Hebrews 9, 12. 
His blood sanctifies us, Hebrews 13, 12. It justifies us and saves us from wrath, Romans 5, 9, and so much more. There were so many references to the miracle of his blood. His blood could not be shed for us. This is where I felt like the connection was made. His blood could not be shed for us without the breaking of the body. Like a vessel, his body was broken and his blood was poured out for us, a pure illustration of his kingdom come and his will be done. Communion is an invitation to come into his very presence and take all that he has given us through his sacrifice into our own. Communion is as much a celebration as it is a reflection and a remembrance. So why do we metaphorically eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ? Because it is a heavenly meal. Physically, it does nothing to quench our thirst and feed our flesh. But the act of taking the bread and wine into our bodies reminds us that we can only be sustained through the spirit and the life of Christ. As we take in the bread, we are to be reminded of all that the broken body of Christ has done for us, his sacrifice through his death and resurrection, his kingdom here and now. And as we drink the cup, we are reminded of all that his blood has paid for and provided for us all the promises of his kingdom now and his kingdom to come. His fleshly temple broke open and his life poured out. Just as the curtain in the temple was ripped in two and the spirit poured out from the Holy of Holies, the earthly bread was broken and given like the spiritual bread of life was broken and given us through his body. The blood poured forth from the temple of Jesus' body to heal us save us and deliver us. We drink the wine for Jesus to remember all that he has done, continues to do, and what is still to come. Communion is an invitation to remember the future and who our conquering king is. Communion is a celebration of victory and love. His love reminding us that he will never leave us or forsake us, that his sacrifice was more than enough we are now invited into the intimacy of partaking in and with him, just like the disciples first did so long ago. We are reminded of the opening of the Holy of Holies every time we take communion, and we are invited into the proclamation that he is here now, and he is coming again to set everything right and take us home. So as we break bread and as we drink wine or juice in our case, um, remember with great thankfulness that he is everything and that we are here by the invitation of his love. And so we remember what he said in his word. Um, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, this is my body. Take it however you want, but for me the symbolism of breaking was a new symbolism for me, so... Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Let's go ahead and drink that. At least I got that open so easy. <laughs> Can we hang there for a minute? Okay, mm -hmm. you can hold that. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to the place in your notes where you were talking about the blood and the, all that the blood does. <clears throat> if we're going to go back into God of Revival here in just a second. Because uh, I, I still got some rejoicing to do because this is good <laughs> news, good news. But I, I, here's what I saw God saying. Uh, I, I wanted, I, I felt like God was saying that you should minister those things out. Okay. And so um, if you could just pray that the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. over everyone who's here. Yeah. And listen, if you are in a place where you don't know if you have been saved or you don't know if you are in relationship with Jesus or you don't know if this covers you, here's the invitation. It's right here, right now. God's saying, come on. Come on. I sent my son. He, he, he died for you. Come on and go ahead and pray those mm -hmm. things over maybe just one at a time and just take okay. it. You know, I've actually read testimonies of people that were healed by taking communion. 
and I've read testimonies of people set free from mental torment by taking communion daily. So it really is a powerful weapon, I feel like, that God has given us out of, you know, many things um, in his word. And the blood is, you know, the blood is a big part of that. Um, when people are doing deliverance, the, the demons cannot stand to hear about the blood of Jesus. You talk about the blood of Jesus, and they're, they're screaming. So the blood of Jesus is, is living and active. It's not, it's not just a, a metaphorical thing living and active so right now jesus we just come before you and we thank you for the sacrifice and we thank you for your blood that your blood is powerful and is living and active and we just release that over every person here to meet them right where they am are god we pray for healing and we pray for deliverance we we thank you for the remission of sins um lord if there is anybody that's not in your kingdom yet that they would hear your words and you would draw their hearts to you um, because there's so much freedom on this side. God, we thank you for the way your blood cleanses us, and we just ask that the blood of Jesus would flow over hurts and wounds, broken hearts and minds, um, any demonic influence in Jesus' name, that it would just be cleansed by your blood. We thank you for the eternal redemption of your blood. We thank you that your blood sanctifies us that we are clean before you, that because of the blood of Jesus, that when you look at us, you see your son Jesus because his blood covers us. We thank you that we are justified and saved from wrath. We are not under the wrath of God because the blood of Jesus has set us free. Um, we thank you that for every drop that was shed, every precious drop of your blood that was shed and every broken part of your body that was broken for us and that by your stripes we are healed. And we thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. And we just say, your kingdom come, your will be done now, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's like rejoice worthy, yeah? That's worth rejoicing a bit. That's worth jumping up and down a little bit. That's worth screaming a little bit. Would you get to your feet? I want to sing this once again. As God's doing this for us, the invitation is to take this message and bring it all over the region so that we would see this region transformed by the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And so I want to sing about this a little bit more, Pastor Ned. You want this from the top, Pastor? See what you can do, oh God of wonders. Power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. There's no prison wall you can break through, no mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up. Trust in you alone. There's no prison wall you can't break through. No mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise. No soul that you can't save. All things are possible. Yeah. 
Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out. Come awaken. Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. A, there's a line in that song that says, come awaken your people, come awaken the city. Where does that start? That starts at the level of intimacy that you have with the Lord. And leave it to our children to, uh, to, to show us God in these moments. So both of my children have done this, and my daughter was just doing this during worship. But I'm holding her, and we're worshiping and whatever. But they take this moment where she kind of grabs my face and she pushes it to one side. And she thinks it's funny, right? And she pushes it to the other side. And then she's up and she's like digging in my shirt and touching my face. And But there's this joy on her face. My son did that too, right? There's this joy in their face because they're exploring their father's face. There's an intimacy that is granted when we explore who our God is, right? And so when, when the progression of this song says, come awaken your people, that's step one. Come awaken your city is next step, right? So we have to make a commitment. And would you would you guys just stand with me right now? Well, we're just gonna go back into that just a little bit, right? I don't wanna just leave us hanging for forever, but I wanna take us back to something. It says, come awaken your people, in your people, excuse me. <laughs> would you commit as this church, as a personal believer in this body of Christ to explore the Father's face? to increase in the intimacy that you have with him. Because where revival begins is in your heart and then it flows out from there. When we, when we dig in and our intimacy increases here in our own hearts, it flows out to everything we do, every interaction we have, every word that we speak, every place that our foot treads. It does not change unless our hearts change. And I'm not saying that you guys aren't intimate with the Lord. I'm asking, would you go to the next level with us? The next level of intimacy. It's a place where we don't doubt. It's a place that we're unconcerned with what the world is doing. That we're taking the joy of the Lord and the intimacy of the Lord everywhere we go. Would you commit to that? If that's you, would you just put your hand on your heart? And if we softly speak that that we come, uh, that you'd come alive in your people, awaken in your people and come alive in your city. And if you would take us back through that net, I would I love it. Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people. Come awaken your city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. 
Continue to pour out your spirit upon this place. Continue to have your way in this place, in and among your people, Lord. As Ben was speaking, and then Megan, it just, to me, it confirmed some things. God gave me a couple of words in worship, and one thing he, uh, he told me is, someone here, they're unsure about Jesus. Is it worth it to follow him? Is it worth it to go all in? Is it worth it to, to abandon all these other things in pursuit of God? And there's a kind of a hesitancy, and I believe that, and this might be tied together, that, that someone here today, that you've laid out the fleece, like you've, you've I hate to say the word challenge, because that's not really what I'm looking for, but you've laid out this, okay, Lord, I, I'm, I'm asking this question. And maybe you didn't ask it in these words, but but you've laid it out. And, and I want to tell you that there's like a decision you've been weighing really, really heavy. And you've hold it, you've held it inside. And I think it's for fear of judgment from people. And I'm, I'm, I want to tell you today, and this cl sounds cliche, but the Lord told me to tell you that he loves you. And he wants you to know that here today. Like you've laid it out there in, in different wording. But he wants me to let you know that he sees you and he hears you. And he doesn't want you to go through with whatever it was you were deciding because he loves you. And, and he reminded me of Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Because in Christ, there's hope and there's a future. And, 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 and a couple of other things, and I'll make this real quick here, that uh, I feel like. I feel like there's somebody here that has, um, and it might be online, maybe two people, um, that you have a heart valve issue that you possibly need it replaced. And if that's you, we want to pray for you. Um, and if that's online, you need to let them know so we can pray for you. And another one is that... Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Hey, uh, could we get ministry teams just by the, the back door back here? If while he's sharing stuff and as we're talking through stuff, you feel the Holy Spirit moving inside of you and you feel like you've got to get prayer right now, we got some teams that are going to be available in the back to be praying through this stuff. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And then uh, two more that I have for sure. And, you know, I, I see somebody at night specifically is what I'm getting, that there's breathing problems at night when you lay down. I don't, I feel like it's anxiety induced but it's specifically when you lay down at night and it freaks you out and you spend more time awake because of that than you do getting rest. And we want to pray over that because God wants to set you free from that. Hmm. Is that someone in the back? Is that you, sister? All right, the last one here. I feel like there's blood flow issues like a physical effects from diabetes that you're dealing with right now. And that's been plaguing you. And God wants to heal you of that too. I believe that. Absolutely believe that. And, and so um, I'm going to pray that real quick, brother. And we just pray into that right now because whether you raised your hand or not, God sees you and God knows it. And so, Lord, we just, uh, we thank you, God, that you are a God of revival, Lord. I thank you that you are a God of provision, that you are a God that answers when we call, Lord. And right now, Lord, we just, we come before you, God. We lift up those right now that are affected by diabetes, Lord, that not only the physical uh, 
affliction, Lord, but even emotional affliction that comes with it, Lord. Right now, we lift them up to you, Lord, and we say be healed in the name of Jesus. We talked about the blood that cleanses, and we plead the blood of Christ over that circumstance. Right now, we say be healed and be whole in the name of Jesus. The ones that have sat uncertain, they've sat on the fence, and they're not sure. The devil owns the fence, and so we say get off the fence, be healed, and be whole. We, we thank you for their lives. We thank you for their soul. We thank you that freedom is in Christ Jesus, Lord. We thank you that you have plans and a hope and a future for your people, for all of them. You, you died for every single one, Lord, and we thank you for that, God. We come against anxiety and breathing issues. We come against the valve replacement right now, Lord. We thank you for brand new valves in the heart right now in the name of Jesus. We just speak that healing right now, Lord. I thank you for those that have committed themselves to you, Lord. I thank you for those that want to go deeper uh, in you, Lord. I thank you that you're doing a mighty work in this place, Lord, that you're filling us up so we can spill out, as Pastor Ben said. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, you know, um, you can stand, you can sit, you can jump around, you can do whatever you got to do. I'm good. Here's where I want to go. I, I feel like the Lord wants to turn the vision that I got, okay, the picture in my head that I got of what God wants to do here within our church. We've talked about being a church that feeds on the word and a church that fights because we've already got the victory. And so we just stand in that, right? I feel like also what he wants to do in this season is he wants us to be a joy bomb. A joy bomb that we're going to explode and just joy is going to come all over. It's going to explode. And I feel like um, the Lord just gave me a scripture uh, coming into today. Uh, it's in the book of Philippians. And this is my joy bomb uh, book of the Bible. Because we're talking about Paul writing this, and when he's in Philippi, he is, what's going on? He's, he's in prison. He's in prison. He's getting beat up, and I love this. What, what were they doing? What were they doing when they were in, in the jail cell? They're like, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, right? They're just praising Jesus. They're singing hymns. Do you have hymns in your heart? You got to have hymns in your heart for walking through those seasons. You got to have it ready to, to bubble up. And as, as he's writing this, we get to chapter 4. He's, he's written about straining towards the goal. And we get to Philippians 4.4 4 and he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'm saying, how can you? Always, always, always. So what about when things are bad? Is that always covered there? How do you do that? How do you do that? Okay, all right. Again, I say rejoice. In case you missed it the first time, he's going to give it to you again. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Oh, here's, here's a reason to rejoice. Y'all ready for it? The Lord is at hand. It's by stepping outside of your circumstance and saying, God is here. That's why I say it every time I get up here now. God's here. He's here right here, right now. The God who goes, and stars come out. He's here right now. The Lord is at hand. So don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so there's this recognizing what's going on in the life around me. So it's not like I'm just pretending everything is all good because everything is not all good. When I look around the, at the world around me, everything is not all good. But what I can do is I can step outside of that and I can say, the Lord's at hand. Everything's not all good, but God is here. But my God is able and he's here. But, but God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, you ever look at people who are going through the storms, 
going through the craziness of life and they're just sitting back like, God's got this. There's a peace. There's a peace, man, a peace that surpasses all understanding and will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, and here's where I want to go. Whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever is just, who shared this this morning? Was that you that came out of your mouth? Hey, come on. <laughs> you must be prophetic. Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So it doesn't say keep looking at the storm. It doesn't say keep looking at the circumstances. It doesn't say keep thinking about how painful this is and and think about how I'm going to tell it to all the people in my life about how hard things are. It, it, It says think on these things. And here's the thing. Sometimes I feel like it's hard to remember back to the last time God did something amazing. Have you guys been there? Where you're like, oh, you got to fight through it. you got to fight. I'm trying to remember so hard, so hard. You know what? Uh, a lot of people um, are, are, are saying like this online stuff with church is, is not, not a good thing. I, I actually love it. Because now I can go back to days like today and I can say, look what God did. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to give us some ammunition or maybe some, some gunpowder to put inside this joy bomb so that any time we need to explode in joy, I can go back and listen to some of the things that God has done. Now, Pastor Donald has asked us last week to think about some of the things that God did this year. Again, we're talking about rejoicing or last, last year, 2021. For me, I'm still easing into 2022. I, I almost wrote 2021 on your guys' baby dedication. I had to stop myself physically like, eh. oh, there's a two there. There's a two. But we've, if we want to live in joy this year, we've got to re the joy. We've got to rejoice. We've got to go back and remember those things that God has done. And we've got to live in that place of recognizing if, if he can do it then. I think there's somewhere in the Bible that says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes, hey, there it is. Someone look back there. Made you look. No, it's actually back there, I promise you. But, um, so that's what I want to do. I want to give an opportunity for some people to testify here this morning. What, what has God done this year that we can rejoice about? Okay, Tisha. Oh, and let me throw this on there, not specifically because it's you, but I'll put it out there for everyone. Um, if we could do it, like, quick. Yes. Okay, okay, so we got all sorts of testimonies. There's testimony time when we can sit with people and just pour into He's them, and then there's me. time that we can draw. That ain't to you, sister. It ain't to you. Hey, if the shoe fits, I'm just saying. All right, I'll try to make it quick. <laughs> anyway, so this is really, really recent. This just happened last Saturday. So we are supposed to be in Hawaii right now, but we're not. And I was, I was like praising God seriously. Like all Saturday, we had Friday, we had to get tested to fly and to get into Hawaii, and our son came up uh, positive, and then he came up inconclusive. Long story short, we had a long Saturday. We were trying to find anything we could do to get him another test because the second one came back inconclusive, and I praised God all day. I praised him and praised him. We make a family vision board every year, and on our vision board for 2021, Hawaii was on it. And the scripture next to it was Jeremiah 17, 7. And it says, he is blessed who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. As I read that, because I went to the vision board, I'm like, Lord, like, this is on our vision board. We're doing this. I got this reflection of my kids. And as we were going through this, my son had so much confidence that he was, like, on his way to his house. He's like, Mom, keep packing because we're going to Hawaii. Like, you keep packing, you know. And then Kaya, I'm like, <laughs> you know, she's like, Mom, I have peace. Like, we're fine, you know. And here I am, like, wanting to freak out, but I'm like, no, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, we got this. Anyways, God is still good. We're not on the trip yet, but we're still going, and we're trusting in his timing, and we have confidence in him, and so through that trial for me, like that seemed like, 
oh my gosh, this is such a headache. Now we have to cancel everything. Like God showed me the faith that my kids have because he's in them. And they had this God, this confidence that I was, I learned from that I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Reminded. We trust and we have confidence in our Lord Christ. Come on. Amen. Oh God. Yay, God. So good. Who else? I'll get this one and then I'll get that one. Cool boots. Hi. Um, so 2021, I think, was the hardest so far in my life. Um, but, you know, God is so good. <laughs> we um, got COVID in January 2021. I got it first, and then my husband and my mom. And my mom, she's elderly. Um, and um, it was so hard. <laughs> you know some of you. Uh, how hard it was. We almost lost her. She was like two months in the hospital. And um, the first two weeks, like, we got bad reports pretty much every day. Um, like, there was a moment when the uh, doctor said, uh, she's not going to make it. She needs a, a tracheostomy, but um, I do not recommend it because she's not going to be able to... Uh, walk, to talk, she'll need to be on oxygen all her life, um, and he put us, like, to make a decision, like, to let her go would be the easiest way, just to just take her off the ventilator, and um, I told him, you know, like, I'm not God, I'm not taking the decision, like, if God wants her to go, she'll go, but if God does not want to go, she'll not go. And he's like, um, well, would you think that God will want people to have holes in their neck? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, he might not, but um, praise God. Like he called us to go to talk with the doctor. We thought it would be him, but praise God was a different doctor. And he... He's like, well, I had like 4,000 of this tracheostomy. Um, it, she's going to be fine. <laughs> and a um, couple days later, she had the tracheostomy. And two weeks la later after that, they took the trach out. And um, she was on oxygen for two months. And um, she's good now. Um, she's with us, healthy as she can be. Um, and we're praising God because without him, we could not been able to do this like and we had like so much prayer backing us like I was thinking in my mind and I counted like friends that confirmed that prayed for us like from over nine countries like everybody was like praying for her and we know that God answers you know like he's too good to not believe that he can do it like he can do it he did it for us he did it for everybody and I know like everybody has a testimony in this room amen come on preach that Thank you. Hi, y'all. This last year was tough for me. August 2nd, the Lord took my husband home. But you know something? I had people actually ask me, you sure are taking this well. And I go, well, God's got him. He certainly doesn't want to come back. <laughs> he is so happy and he's not in pain and we're all going to be together again and about joy I've had people all my life say why are you so happy because God loves me Come on, let me tell you about him so that's what that joy is about hey, we wanted it to bring people to us with it mm -hmm. amen amen can I just read off a few things that I, I, I heard God do this year with people that we know, people who are, like, present in this room? Um, thyroid issues 
were healed. Relationships with kids were healed. Um, Someone who was supposed to be in the hospital for 8 to 16 weeks um, came home like a whole lot sooner. Um, We've seen sleep issues healed. We've seen disc issues in backs like disappear, like the, the, the stuff that were on there one time in a scan and then the next time they weren't, weren't there anymore. We've seen marriages saved. We've seen uh, people hearing God's void, voice and accurately speaking those things out on the, on the increase. So good. So good. Anyone else got a quick one to, they want to drop? Okay. Uh, sorry, I see your hand. I was like, sorry. But um, there's a lot that happened in 2021, and I'm going to try to sum it up, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying. So in 2020 was a really, really tough year, but in the summer camp, it was, like, amazing. In the, like, I, like, I went to 2021 camp thinking, like, nothing would be better than that. And I was wrong. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of stuff that ha- even happened greater after camp. And I didn't even know that, like, that would be possible. Because, like, at camp, I'm like, okay, this is my one week for God. Like, let's go. <laughs> and um, he kind of just, like, gave me, like, he kind of just made my life a puzzle piece, basically. And, like, he told me some of the puzzle pieces. and. Hmm. Like, he told my Aunt Jamie, like, hey, like, he's going to, like, he put a whole, like, blessing on you about how you're going to save the generation and save kids. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay, great. Like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then after camp, um, kind of did, like, the same thing where, like, my mom had us spread out and, like, talk to God. And I was like, okay, God, like, what do you want to do? I was like, you know me, like, talk to me, you know, the best way you can. He's like, okay, you're going to be a youth pastor. I was like, a youth pastor? I know. I was like, a youth pastor? Like, what do you mean a youth pastor? He's like, well, CG, look at it. Like, look at the puzzle pieces. You're kind. You love kids. And you're just like a little bundle of joy. And like, it's hard to make you mad, especially around kids, you know? And look at your mom. Like, you have a great example. Yeah. I was like, I was like, okay, like, let's go. And then, like, the whole entire week, like, the song of, like, your children and their children, the blessing. And he just, like, gave me that song the whole entire week. And then Kaya sang it. And I was like, I was like, thanks, God, for, like, giving me, you know, my thing. And then um, later that night at the rap thing, he was talking. And he was like, CJ, who's your God? And I was like, you. He was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, like, I'm sure, like, you're my God. He was like, I don't know. Seems like school's your God right now. Oh. I'm like, I was like, is she really calling me out right now? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, who's your God? I was like, you? He's like, no, it's not. I was like, yeah, it is. He's like, no, it's not. Right now, school's your God. Homework's your God. People is your God. Boards your God. Like, like literally, like, all you think about is just school uh, homework, tests, jobs, or anything, just life things, but you're making them your God, not me. I was like, well, I'll make you my God, I promise. <laughs> he's like, he's like, okay, prove it to me, you know, like, write this essay that your dad wants you to do, or, um, <laughs> yeah, he would even write, like, a 10-page essay about, like, anything I want to in the, the, like, in the Bible, and I did Esther, because, God always gave me Esther. Like when things went down with just family stuff, he gave me Esther. And like he's just like reminding me that I'm an independent woman, you know? <laughs> and so Dang. just like <laughs> he just slowly gave me my puzzle pieces throughout twenty twenty one and he was like giving me in twenty twenty two. And I can't remember who was saying to me, I was like telling him like telling them, I was like, Oh, I can't wait for like what God is like gonna have start for me he's like well i think god has already started for you. right like, <laughs> come on so here's what i'm hearing that god is releasing destiny and he's giving next yeah. steps yeah. come on i can't believe i'm up here talking 
I used to come to a Bible study here years and years ago, and for some reason I was just drawn to coming here today. And, and now I'm here with this in my hand. But I need to tell you this story. It's a sad story, but it has a happy ending. Okay, we all know what's happening to young ladies all over the, the country. We, and we all know, oh, even young, young people, period, okay? Well, there was a lady and a man who had one child. That one child turned 18, got caught up in that. And I'm going to try not to cry. But she got caught up in that. I don't know those people. They're from Northern California. They live in paradise of all places. Anyway, they heard that their daughter, they couldn't find her, they didn't know where she was because these girls just disappear. They came, they heard that she was in Idaho Falls, Idaho Falls and another town, like Burley, okay? They were here. They were at a dinner. Now, this is how the Lord works. We pay attention. They were at a dinner, and they were kind of wandering around, and we had this small Bible study on Monday night in our home, and one of our members had bought the whole table. And so we saw him wandering around, and he went over there, and he said, would you like to come and sit at my table? They said yes, and, th and that was on like a Friday, and on Friday... I'm making this too long, I'm sorry. And on Friday, they, you know, this was Friday or Saturday, and he got to know them. They told their story to him, and he said, well, if you're still in town on Monday, could you come to our Bible study, and, and we'll all pray together. So he said, they said, yes, we would love to. They came, and my husband and I, about three or four years ago, heard about a group that's here local in this area. And I had written his name down somewhere, looked, couldn't find it, made a couple of calls before the evening was over with, called them and gave them their number and my number and said, you please make sure that before you leave town, you get together with this man. Long story short, they got together with this man and they, it took months. But in the end, because see, when a child is 18, you can all, no longer just go get them if you know they're in a bad circumstance. They couldn't do that. But this man knew the ins and the outs, and they just got their daughter back about a month ago. <laughs> that, is that is the Lord at work. Come on. Yes. Hey, would you guys stand your feet with me? Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify. Let his name continually be on my lips. And so, Father, we just speak this out over this congregation that we would be that joy bomb that we would go into circumstances, that we would go every, in every sphere that you have placed us, win, placed us in, and that we would explode the joy of Jesus. God, for those of us who just need that ammunition, I pray that you would show us, remind us. And here's, here's the mission this week, folks. Write down the things that God has done in your life so that you can proclaim them all around everywhere you go and just be like, hey, you'll never believe what just happened to me. Right? You'll never believe what happened to me this year. You'll never believe what God did. And that's going to release joy into the environment. And it's going to change environment. We will see the transformation of the gospel of Jesus Christ here in our midst. And so, Father, we lay it all down before you. Open our ears. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill us afresh, that as we stand in your presence, that as we would be men and women of God who live in your presence, that boldness would be upon us, that we would go forth without any fear, without any anxiety. We cancel the fear of man over our lives, over our mouths. No longer are we bound. We are freed up to go in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says...
Amen. Amen. Hey, love you guys. We will see you again next week. Be blessed.